Hello, I'm Kendra Von Esch, and you are listening to my 10-minute daily podcast, Reality Reflections. I bought into what this world said would make me happy. Money, prestige, power, and hey, if it feels good, do it, because life is stressful, so party hard. Do whatever makes you happy. But that didn't quite work out, because I felt even more insecure, full of fear, shame and anxiety, and never, ever good enough. Then God found me and flipped my reality upside down and transformed my life. And I want this for everyone. So I left my executive career to help others find true acceptance, supernatural peace, joy, and love that only comes from a relationship with God. Here is my reality reflection for today. Okay. Lots and lots and lots of you people are coming to me. That is the worst English accent I think I've done in a long time. Wow. I should do the whole, I should do this whole thing in an English accent, which I cannot do. I sound like some American trying to be English. Because if I have an English accent, maybe you will actually think I'm smarter than I am. Now I threw a little bit of Southern in there. (laughs) This is not my skill. I am not one of those people who can, what do you say, imitate other people, do impressions. That is not me. But I can help you get closer to God. I know that. And that's what we're going to talk about today. A lot of you have reached out to me often, frequently, recently to ask again, can you dive into mental prayer? And I'm telling you, I have this morning stuff going on. I still don't have my phone. Um, I'm sorry. I hope that this is an okay recording for you. Nobody's more sorry than me. I've got a bird chirping outside my window. I've got my coffee in my hands that I'm going to take a sip of. <clears throat> Excuse me, clearing my throat. Mm. And yes, I've done this like 10 times before I hit record. So I'm just struggling here. Okay. So we're going to talk about mental prayer and how do you do it? What is it that you're listening for? And what's the purpose of mental prayer? And then at the end, because I'm just going to explain it and I'm going to kind of interject and, and walk through all of kind of the phases of mental prayer. But then at the end, I will do a guided meditation so that you can come back to this particular podcast with me and my stuffy nose and phlegmy voice. (laughs) You can come back multiple times and listen again and again and again to me. Um, But it may help you as you're sitting by yourself trying to get into the presence of the Lord and to go through a process. But what I want to uh, make sure everyone understands is that we're all different people. We learn differently. We build relationships differently. We need different things from God. And trust me, God knows exactly what you need, exactly what I need. What we have to do is let go and let God do whatever God wants to do in our lives. I think I'm going to kind of start a little, a little series, if you will. I'm not going to call it anything or, you know, make it a specific must do, but I think the more that I can help practically walk you through what mental prayer is, how to do it, maybe how to live in the spirit, how when you're facing temptation, do you call out to God? Like, how do you live with God? Okay. 
four minutes in and I haven't even started. Okay, it's so important that you make this decision. It's a choice to love God. You have to make the choice. We've said it a million times. Our currency with the Lord is our time and our heart. They go together. Because we can give him all the time in the world. And if we're just sitting there looking at the clock, waiting for it to be over, that's not what God's looking for. God's wanting our heart. He wants us to thirst for him. Go back into the catechism, section four, prayer. Read it. Read it often. It's the three different parts of prayer that it's a gift from God and we must humbly approach him. It's communion with the Lord, and it's a covenant. Okay, those last two might be flipped in the catechism. Sorry for the <laughs> for the snotty nose thing. Oh, and now the coffee maker's gurgling. Mm. Yes, I started drinking coffee again, and I need to stop. Just a heads up. Um because I stopped there when I juiced back in November last year. And I feel better when I don't drink it. But lately, I've been thinking I need some coffee. Okay. Find, first make the choice. And then make sure that you find a place, your prayer place, your sacred space, your Christ corner, that you know when you're here, you are going to talk to God. And make the whole house know that this is where you are going to be praying. So if someone sees you there, that they leave you alone. Kids, dogs, spouses, neighbors, circus animals. (laughs) You know, that's your place. Some people I know go into a closet. Some people go into a bathroom. Other people go into their car. Some people go into their car in their garage. Others take a drive. Whatever you have to do, find that space. And it could be outside. Surround yourself with sacramentals. Have a crucifix somewhere that you can gaze at. Maybe a statue of our Blessed Mother. Maybe a rosary in your hand or a cross in your hand. Maybe you have a St. Benedict medal. You've got a scapular on. You've got a, a crucifix, a miraculous medal. You know, I mean, these are not superstitious items. Sacramentals are meant to increase and remind us of the love and the attachment that we should have to God, detaching from the world and attaching to God. And not just attaching ourselves, but depending on God 24-7. If you have holy water, if you have holy oil, grab it. If you have holy salt, Bless yourself, bless the area that you are in, bless your whole house. By the way, I'm going out and expanding this. If you haven't had your house blessed by a priest in a year, get him over, have him do an exorcism blessing everywhere with holy water. And you can also have him do a perimeter prayer with uh, exercise salt. Get into your kids' rooms, (laughs) please. And do that once a year, as well as every time that we have the epiphany, which I think is the 6th of January. Get the chalk, the blessed chalk, and write on your doorways. Okay, I'm getting off on a tangent. Back to prayer. All right, you've got all of your sacramentals around you. You've blessed yourself. You've sat down. Maybe you have a blessed candle. The minute you light that puppy, all of the spirits have to go. Plus with the holy water and the oil and the salt. So take a few deep breaths. Put yourself in the moment. 
right? Put yourself in the moment, in the present presence of God. This is where you take a few deep breaths. You bring the Holy Spirit into your body. If you're feeling anxious and you can't get your head off of what's going to happen later today or that conversation you had with your spouse earlier in the morning or whatever the case may be, you need to now deliver those spirits. Because if you're not starting to feel calm in the Lord, looking forward to speaking with him, right? If you're not, then you got to deliver those spirits out. So how do you do it? Well, you figure out what the problem is. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bind the spirit of fear, worry, anxiety, confusion, distraction, obsession. Maybe you can't stop thinking of something other than prayer, Uh, guilt, lack of forgiveness, resentment, whatever it is, cast that spirit out and then ask the Holy Spirit to come in, right? Come in and fill you with his peace, with his concentration, with his voice, with his word to give you the eyes to see, the ears to hear what this time is going to bring to you. Quick break, quick coffee. Okay. Then you got to start picturing the Lord. And this is where the individual individuality comes into play. I am, I've got a pretty creative imagination, but I'm not one that truly embraces Lectio, Lectio Divina in terms of me being in the scene, smelling the hot desert air, feeling the sand and the, you know, the dirt stick on my sweat. I mean, like this isn't kind of my way of praying, But that may be the way that your mind works. Your mind may be like, this is awesome. I can't believe that I am sitting in the Middle East with Jesus. That is awesome if that's the way that you connect to the word, right? Because I always do my my meditation on the word of God, and I strongly recommend everybody does, and I'll, I'll share why. But this is where this becomes you. You're going to find a lot of different ways for mental prayer out there by a lot of different saints and, you know, people that have me, others, you know, but here's the deal. You're, you've got to make it your own. It's got to be your own relationship with God. So you may pull one or two things from this method, if you will, and then one or two things from that method, and then it becomes no longer a method. It becomes a relationship with you and God. And that's, and then that should grow. That should develop. That should change just like any relationship. Just be aware that there's no wrong way to do this. Just do it. And even if you are fighting distractions the whole time, it's okay. St. Francis de Sales says, look, even if that's all you do is fight distractions, God says your meditation was a good meditation. You good and faithful servant, pat your stinking self on the back and go on with your day. Yeah, maybe it wasn't the best for you, but God is so stinking happy because guess what? You could have just walked away and said, I'm not feeling it, I don't want to do it, or grabbed your phone and went on with a complete distraction, ignoring prayer altogether. But when you fight through it, God is happy. And we all need to decide to pray. Remember, it's choosing to love love God. And you you cannot fight sin if you do not pray. Mental prayer being specifically that. That was St. Alphonsus Liguori. If you do not practice mental prayer every day, you will not be able to avoid venial sin, let alone mortal sin, right? We talked about this yesterday. If you you didn't hear the podcast yesterday, go back. It's a really good one. (laughs) Have you ever been asked by a priest if you pray? Okay, back to meditative prayer. 
So you've got all your sacramentals, you've set the stage, you're feeling cozy, you've got your cup of coffee, maybe it's hot lemon water, maybe it's, I don't know, milk, whatever. You're sitting down, you're now putting yourself in the presence of God. Whatever that means, do you stare at a crucifix? I like to try and think of the entire Holy Trinity. So I start with God. And of course, the only things that my imagination can really go to are the pictures of God with a face and kind of like arms, but the rest of his body turned into like this spiritual cloudy thing. And so I just kind of, I look up. I find that when I look out my window, I get distracted, even though all I'm seeing is leaves and tree branches. I find that when I look out my window, I start, my mind starts wandering. But when I look up to my ceiling, which is blank and white, I seem to be able to focus. I can almost, you know, like put a picture of the Lord up there. And then I always picture to his right, Jesus. And I think about Jesus's role, right? I look at God, the father who loves me to creation, who, who created everything, And then I think about Jesus, who's the redeemer and the healer. And then I think about the Holy Spirit swirling around in the air that I'm breathing in my room. And also inside me from baptism and through my confirmation. Here to sanctify me, to transform me, the spirit of the father and the son within me. And then I call on the holy angels and the holy army, right? I ask Mary and I ask St. Joseph, the terror of demons. I ask Mary to protect me with her blue mantle. I ask her to take me to her son's sacred heart. I ask the Holy Spirit, her beloved spouse, to help me pray, to hear what I'm supposed to hear, to see what I'm supposed to see in the word. And I ask all of the holy angels and saints, including my guardian angel, to protect me and to come around me. And so in my room, I'm starting to picture all the angels and saints and this beautiful heavenly heavenly group around me as I go into prayer. I'm asking heaven to pray with me. And then... If I, you know, sometimes I sit there, if I'm ready, I dive in and I go right into the daily reading. And this is why I think it's so important for you to honestly read the word of God and why the daily readings, because then you don't have to go pick something yourself. And I also feel like, wait a minute, there might be something that God is specifically trying to tell me on this day. I mean, he did put the readings out there, year A, B, and C. So every year we get through the Bible. We just don't get through all of it. And there's different, that's why version A, version B, version C has different readings that we read. But in the end, we should be reading the Bible every single day. And so why not have the daily readings and the season that we're in speak to us? rather than us reading Genesis when we're in the middle of, you know, Advent. You know, I mean, although those could kind of go together, but so then you read and sometimes you're going to read five times. Sometimes you'll read the, (laughs) you'll read the reading and you'll have to go back and be like, I just read that whole, I don't even know what the words were. That happens to me a lot when they get into the names of people in the Old Testament. And I'm like, okay, who who created these names? These are ridiculous. And, and as we ask, the, as we go to read, we ask the Holy Spirit to give us the eyes to see, ears to hear, to put on our heart so something will come out. A word, a phrase. And then if it does, or if it doesn't, you'll know something, just sit, close your eyes, think about what you've read, go back, read it again. You may need to take a couple of minutes and just <clears throat> let it sit with you. And 
And then that's where you start hearing God. So in Christian meditation, mental prayer, we are supposed to hear what God wants us to do today. That's the point. There is a purpose of meditation. It's not just to keep your mind quiet. It's not just to empty your mind. You're actually filling your mind with God. And when the thoughts come into your head, now you need to figure out, is that God? Is that you? Or is that Satan? And so start asking, Lord, if this is you, I want more. Help me with this. Guide me with this thought. And maybe you'll put another thought in your head, or maybe your shoulders will fall down from your ears, or you'll feel this just peace. You'll really feel calm. Okay, same thing. If it's opposite, you're feeling a little irritable and edgy about it, you have to take into consideration what the thought is. Because if the thought is about you committing a mortal sin and you're feeling poked and pricked and, you know, your mind is just being kind of beaten up and you know it's not right, your body feels sick sick to even think about it, but you're still considering it, that's God. God isn't always peace, especially if you're still committing mortal sin. Because in that case, you may have, well, if I just do this, I'll feel better. I'll have that, you know, edge taken off. And Satan will give you that peace. That's one of the St. Ignatius rules of discernment of spirits. Rule number one, if you're still committing mortal sin, know that when you decide to commit that sin, you're going to have peace. It's going to feel good. You're going to want to do it. And that's not God. (laughs) That's not the peace that you would get from God who's leading you toward a decision. As a matter of fact, in that case, God's the one that's poking and pricking you and making you feel uncomfortable and guilty before you do it. And so that is how it starts. And the more that you engage with God and the more that you sit in this prayer time, and the more that you talk to him and you ask him questions and you pay attention to how your body feels, you can then leave that prayer time. Hopefully you'll get something out of it. And it may be something, I've mentioned this before, call your mom. Remember, I got that three times from the Lord. Call your mom, call your mom, call your mom. And myself, I didn't get it, didn't want to call my mom. I love my mom, but she's a talker, just like me, right? We get on the phone, holy cow, an hour's gone by. I didn't want to talk to her. I was like, I don't have time to talk to my mom. But I did. And that's living in the spirit. That's allowing the spirit to prompt you and then doing it. I got off that phone call with her in 10 minutes. I felt like night and day. She talked me right off the ledge. It was a complete godsend. And I didn't have any because I don't know God's ways, but I did God's will. Didn't make sense to me at the time. But when it was three times (laughs) that he told me to call my mom, I called her. So it might be something crazy like that that comes in, in your prayer that has nothing to do with what you're actually reading on the page. This is when the Bible becomes, you know, the more you read the Bible, the more the Bible reads you. And this is where the word applies in our lives right here, right now in the 2021 year in the madness of what's going on in this 2000 year old book, or maybe it's obviously it's not 2000 years old. It's a little newer than that, but this book is speaking to us today. All right. That's what you're trying to get. What am I supposed to do? And then lastly, 
you conclude. You repeat again, Lord, this is what I'm hearing. Is this what you want me to do? And you listen and you pay attention and then you get this feeling because God will make himself known. And it's so awesome when you're sitting there and he does it, right? He gives you this beautiful feeling of calmness and peace. And you're like, okay, that was totally you, God. I get it. Then we end with a conclusion and we pray and we ask the Lord, please, 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 please give me the grace to do this. Because sometimes it may not be an easy one. Maybe he's asking you to apologize to someone or to forgive someone. Maybe he's asking you to stop with your addiction. These are not easy things. So we need to ask for the grace to do what he's asked us to do. Okay, here's the thing. I can only record for 30 minutes max. So I'm not going to walk you through this, but I'm going to recap it. I'm at 25 minutes and I, I can't walk you through a mental thing in that short of time, but I'm going to recap it. So grab your pen. Preparation. Choose the same time, same place for prayer. Make it a habit. Bring sacramentals around. Holy water, holy oil, salt, crucifixes, blessed, statues of Mary, the Bible. Wear them. Scapulars, St. Benedict medals around your wrists, around your neck. Miraculous medal, crucifix. And then breathe in the Holy Spirit. And in this prayer place that you have chosen, picture the Holy Trinity, speak to each one of them, and then call on the Holy Army, Mary and St. Joseph, your guardian angel, your patron saints, all the holy angels and saints, call on mom and grandpa and dad, whoever's up there. I didn't mention the act of contrition, but as I put myself in the presence of the Lord, I do apologize for the sins that I've committed. I don't do the one that is memorized. I talk from my heart and I use examples as if I am in an outside uncontained confession with him. And that's where I say, now, Lord, I give myself to you. I empty myself to you. I surrender myself to you today. And that's that one additional step of every prayer day is, okay, I'm humble because I don't know how to pray as I ought. And I need you to open my eyes. And I am also offering my entire self, my mind, body, soul, spirit, all my thoughts, all my words, all my deeds to you, God. You live through me today. And tell me how you want me to do that by diving into the word. And then that's where you meditate. Once you find that theme, you find that verse, you find that word. You sit with it and you allow God to put thoughts in your mind. You ask God if it's him. You ask what he wants you to do with that. It's a constant question session. God, is this you? Do you want me to do this, Lord? Do you not want me to do this? I mean, you got to ask him both ways so that you've got to pay attention. Don't ask him too fast because you do got to, you got to pay attention to your body. You've got to pay attention to what he's sending to you. Maybe it's even a bird that comes to your windowsill while you're asking that question. Those are things that some people may not even pay attention to, but it may happen. And then you come to the conclusion and you pray for the grace to do it. And then you pray for the Lord to send you messages clearly all day, your guardian angel to protect you, lead you, guide you, rule you. And you will find that your day will be filled with God differently. Okay, I know it's a long one. 
I know I rattled off on a couple of tangents, and some of you have heard this and some of you have not. But all I know is I can't repeat it enough. And it takes 17 times for someone to be able to take a concept, learn it, and be able to repeat it to somebody else. And that's a lot of times of repetition. So get used to it, kids. <laughs> Because I so desperately want this for you. I want you to know and understand what mental prayer is and to practice it, to live it, to love it. And I have 30 seconds left, so I am going to stop by saying seek some time to practice just what we did. 15 minutes at a minimum. Minimum. Go for 30. Alrighty, everyone. I love you all. Have a blessed and inspired day.